Ladies and gentlemen, our ceremony will begin momentarily. Today's ceremony is considered an outdoor ceremony, and all headgear is to be worn by all military personnel. We also ask that you please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices at this time. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to historic Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall. 
originally established as Fort Whipple in 1863 and changed to Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall in 2009. Its main purpose was fortification in the defense of Washington. Since its inception, Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall has been the home of horse cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Today, it is home to the Old Guard, the United States Army Band, and the United States Army Garrison. Before today's review begins, the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, presents a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections, Gary Owen and Lily Marlene.
Once again, good morning and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own, pay a special tribute to several soldiers who are retiring after many years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's ceremony, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing's Own provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Day Kim and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Delta Company, commanded by First Lieutenant Grant Windham and led by Sergeant First Class Jordan Cagle. Next on line is Hotel Company, commanded by Captain Jeremy Klein and led by First Sergeant Brandon Jenkins. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, in the center of our formation, and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Jose Lopez. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by 1st Lieutenant Dirk Weisenberger, and led by Sergeant First Class John Robinson. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander-in-Chief's Guard is commanded by 1st Lieutenant Michael Deuce and led by Sergeant First Class Earl Thomas. Next on line is MP Company, commanded by Captain Ryan Byers and led by 1st Sergeant Patrick Bowser. The last element to your left, dressed in the Continental Musician's Uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit, the men and women of the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintain this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The corps is led today by Drum Major Ryan Mullins. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Lieutenant Colonel Richard A. Towner, Commander, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 52 well-earned campaign streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 5 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand are the hosts for today's retirement ceremony. Colonel Patrick M. Roddy Jr., Commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and Command Sergeant Major Richard A. Woodring, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Military District of Washington.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the United States National Anthem. Attachment. Present. Please be seated. Ceremonial at ease. Headquarters, Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following soldiers of the Department of the Army are retired. Colonel Timothy G. Bonner, Chaplain Corps. Colonel Michael E. Cannon, Jr., Chaplain Corps. <laughs> Colonel Matthew B. Garber, Medical Specialist Corps. Colonel James P. Lau, Field Artillery. (laughs) 
Colonel Darren D. Lynn, Field Artillery. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Craig Kasuchi, Aviation. Lieutenant Colonel Derek L. Richardson, Signal Corps. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel William Tucker III, Signal Corps. Chief Warrant Officer 3, Enrias Coyazo Arena, Adjutant General Corps. <laughs> Sergeant First Class, Mary J. Roberts, Dental Corps. We are proud to recognize these soldiers' devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors! Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Roddy. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the most important retiring soldiers and your families. On behalf of the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, Welcome to today's Department of the Army Retirement Ceremony. 
Thank you all for joining us for today's ceremony from around the nation and around the world via the live stream. This includes family, friends, mentors, mentees, battle buddies, and comrades in a profession of arms. We thank you and recognize that your joining us today is in direct recognition of this special group of Americans and their careers of service and sacrifice to the nation and the undeniable impact on the legion of others throughout their careers. You have truly honored them and their families. I'd like to start by recognizing the outstanding soldiers of the Old Guard and the U.S. Army Band Pershing Zone. These great soldiers have the honor of representing the professionalism and dedication of our entire army, over one million soldiers in uniform today. They stand here on behalf of America's army for you. This morning, we recognize 10 retiring leaders who represent over 300 years in uniform, and this includes over 30 years of combat service. These soldiers are chaplains, medical and dental professionals, artillerymen, public affairs officers, communicators, and police. They hail from around our country and their careers have taken them all over the world. They are bonded together by the profession of arms and in each case, a full career of selfless service to their nation. I stand in awe of the thousands of mornings each of these soldiers woke up, planted their feet on the ground, sometimes in their own homes, oftentimes in faraway places, and put on a uniform to embark upon the business of defending our country and building the readiness to answer the nation's call. Each day, putting the welfare of our nation and the American sons and daughters before their own personal comfort and welfare. They did everything our country asked of them, and they not only succeeded and accomplished each mission, but they did it upholding the values of our profession and the nation that they serve. This includes service in Iraq, Korea, Haiti, Afghanistan, Qatar, Ecuador, Kuwait, Kosovo, Liberia, Egypt, Jordan, Germany, and Honduras. Their uniforms, they tell the story. The ribbons, the badges, the patches reflect their service, skills, and assignments over the years. The golden stripes on their right sleeves reflect their combat tours of duty, over 60 among them. Their uniforms tell the story of an army profession, of battles fought and won, of overseas missions to aid those in need, and stories of valor and stories of sacrifice. For every ribbon and every badge and every combat strike, there's a story that's not told. That's the story of the families who served alongside these soldiers before you, who shared in their sacrifices and provided the support and strength to accomplish what our nation asked of them. This sacrifice is missed birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, Christmases, and Thanksgivings. The sacrifice is many handwritten letters, care packages, and missed bedtime stories. The sacrifice is waiting in hours in line for phones and internet in austere location. The sacrifice is, in a word, hard. Your army, your nation, thanks you and your families for your sacrifice. We thank you for always upholding the ideals which make this the greatest professional army the world has ever seen. You are our army. Your service and your sacrifice is etched in our army's history. To the American public, you are soldiers and members of consistently one of the highest respected professions in our nation. To us, you are and you always will be part of a brotherhood bound by our common thread of duty, honor, and country. Families, I know you are proud of each and every one of these soldiers, as you should be. Our army is proud. America is proud. To our families, you are truly the strength of these soldiers. And on behalf of our army and on behalf of our nation, thank you. Everyone, please join me in a round of applause for all those families out there in support of these soldiers today.
to the soldiers retiring today, I congratulate you on a job well done. You stood guard, you maintained the eternal vigil which kept this country free for 245 years. But your work is not over. You are professional problem solvers, team builders. You exemplify the American, the American spirit of getting things done and taking care of your people. As you enter the retiree roles for the Army, know that you are soldiers for life. And though not in uniform, I have no doubt that you will lead by example in your communities. Well, you will continue to be a symbol of our Army and what it means to serve and what it means to be an American. You will always be an ambassador to our Army and an example for the next generation of soldiers who will raise their hand and follow in your example and pick up the mantle. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Army and a grateful nation, thank you. You have made our Army better. God bless you. God bless your families. I wish you my very best. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Song. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.